Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. This is the weekly news wrap-up for Friday, September 7th, 2018. And I wanted to just sum up the week that I've seen, and I'm, I'm going to sum it up in a word, and that's panic. The deep state, the mainstream media, the Democrats, call it what you will, everything from the Kavanaugh hearing and uh, Corey, Senator Cory Booker releasing classified, or I should say confidential information, emails from Kavanaugh from 2000, from 9-11, 2000, what, one, uh, unbelievable breaking the rules of the Senate. He could lose his Senate seat over. I don't know if he will or not, but really unbelievable. Uh, just a panic move, and of course it's really not much there. A dud, a nothing burger, a a poof, a uh, passing gas in the wind is what it was. And then you have the uh, the, the the absolute desperation of the New York Times uh, uh, putting out an op-ed with an anonymous source from a White House anonymous source. Yeah, we're just supposed to believe them. This is some high-ranking source. I say BS on the BS. And then this person is saying he's going to resist and undermine and try to thwart anything the president does. That's sedition. That's treason. Matter of fact, that's what Donald Trump called it, treason. And he's demanding the New York Times reveal the source for their op-ed. Absolute Hail Mary panic move by the New York Times, you know. You know, without fear or favor. Oh, get out of here. Listen, this is not an op-ed, folks. This is propaganda. This is what this is. Thought-shaping, mind-controlling propaganda to make you think, Donald Trump is off the rails. We're back to this now. Donald Trump is off the rails. They even brought up the 25th Amendment that you could remove a sitting president if he wasn't fit for duty. We're back to this. We're... They're making it up and they're recycling the stuff all over again and taking another run at it. And then you have, uh, you know, Woodward and Bernstein fame, Bob Woodward. He should be embarrassed and ashamed of himself. He's uh, releasing quotes, uh, you know, from his book, his upcoming uh, book. And he's already got three of his top quotes to people. Trump's former lawyer who says, I didn't say that. The Secretary of Defense, Mattis, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't say that. You have John Kelly, the chief of staff. I didn't, didn't, didn't call him an idiot. Woodward looks awful stupid here. He better get his source to reveal themselves because he's got three top sources that say, hey, 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 they made that up. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I mean, you talk about desperation. Of course, uh, Woodward is of a, you know, Watergate fame, you know, the squirt gun fight. Uh, it wasn't a national security issue and no money changed had. And that is not what happened here with the exoneration of Hillary Clinton and the global charity fraud and the emails and the exoneration before investigation and the framing, the counterintelligence operation, the uh, the phony document written in part by the, the Justice Department and the FBI, FBI paid steal uh, and the Justice Department in part wrote it, Bruce Orr. Uh, it, it was a passed off as opposition research paid for by Hillary Clinton uh, that they used this phony document to fraudulently apply for warrants. That is likely all that stuff is going to be declassified soon. That's going to put the kibosh on this whole phony frame job uh, investigation on the president where they had to make it up. They have to make it up, folks. And uh, th this is uh, even even the uh, you know Chuck, Chuck Todd who's on Meet the Press. He's not the press. He's a former Democratic uh, uh, operative. Chuck Todd, we have to fight back. You have to fight back. Excuse me. You have to report the news, Mister Journalist. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. Report the news. This idea, Bob Woodward, also anonymous sources. I mean, I guess his his uh, uh, fame has finally run out. You know, his free coffee. And his free stuff with uh, Watergate has finally run out. Now he's, uh, and I wonder if they have something on him, to do this kind of reporting with, they're all anonymous sources. Wow, you know what kind of a story I could have if I could just put together anonymous sources? I worked at ABC and at CNN. I could never use a single anonymous source. Imagine, I couldn't imagine walking into my boss's office because I had to do a bunch of research before I did any. We'd just go out and fumble around and record stuff and then come back and put it together. I had to have it laid out. 
completely laid out ahead of time with a, a premise and who the victims were and what the documents we had were, how we could make our case, and could this pass legal. This is before we shot an, an inch of tape, before we shot a nanosecond of video. I can't imagine walking into my boss's office and say, hey, listen, um, I, I, I'm going to trash the president of, uh, and let's not say President Trump, the president of Amazon, the president of Netflix, the president of 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 uh, of uh, uh, GE, the president of General Motors, the president of Ford, and I'm going to say dreadful things, and you can't know who my source is. I don't have any documents. I don't have any proof. I don't have any recordings. I don't have anything, but I'm going to say dreadful things about what they're doing, what their companies are doing. They, they'd look at me like I was nuts. I mean, they would... Uh, what? I, they may not even let me be a reporter after that. If they have, my judgment is that bad. I had to have a full background check before I could get on at CNN and, or, and before that ABC. I mean, they could check everything I did in the field. I had to be a choir boy. I had to be credit worthy. I, had to, I couldn't have any felonies, bankruptcies. I, I, it had to be, be sterling. And it was. That's outrageous. A single so I could never use, if I had a single source, anonymous, give me a tip, I could chase down the story. I better have two more sources that will go on record. Two more sources. I had a source, I, I, I've said this before on the air and other people's air, I, I would want to do a story about 9-11. Now we're hearing, and we've been hearing for the past, past few years, all these people got cancer. At the time, I had come back from out of town, drove in from across the country, I think it was Colorado Springs, Drove in, listened to all this, and said, oh, my gosh, that's a Superfund site. And I thought they were going to send me down to 9-11 to the, to the, in Manhattan, I lived in Manhattan. I thought they were going to send me down there. So I was running around getting respirators with metal containers that were good down to five microns. And I uh, had a source uh, at uh, Caesar Sinai Hospital. He was an MD, the head of, uh, of occupational hazards. His mentor figured out that... Uh, uh, asbestos would give you cancer. And he said, oh, man, that's a super fun site. Anything 20 blocks, 20 blocks in New York is one mile. Anything within 20 blocks, they ought to have a full hazmat suit on and a respirator. At the very least, they should have a respirator on. Very few people did. They had these little masks on. I said, what about this little mask? That you get? Oh, you might as well have a sock on your face, he says. I said, well, you go on. Now, I'm, do I'm getting ready to do the story. I'm pitching this to my bosses. So you'll go on record and say, I'm going to come and put a camera in front of you. You're going to say this. Yes. Oh, yes, I will. I'm not putting words in your mouth. This is what you're going to say, that you need a full respirator. Yes. Nobody knew that. Do you know how many people, after that happened in the first 24 hours, do you know how many people ended up at the hospital down there in lower Manhattan? I think it was St. Francis. I think it's that. Anyway, the hospital down in lower Manhattan, 11. You either died or you got out. So the people who were at risk were the first responders. They wouldn't let me do that story at ABC, and I had it laid out. Now, now, fast forward to today, what passes it as journalism, what's not journalism, what, what, uh, what uh, Woodward is doing uh, is, uh, is, is propaganda and, and uh, character assassination of the president. And he's doing it because uh, they want you to think that the president's unstable and that when indictments start coming, and they are going to start coming after they wrap up Kavanaugh, uh, the Kavanaugh at the, uh, you know, to, to solidify a 5-4 uh, decision uh, of constitutionalists on the Supreme Court, uh, they, they're going to say that, well, he's crazy or he's Stalin uh, or, uh, or whatever. But, you know, the op-ed uh, piece was to bring up the 25th Amendment, which allowed you to remove a sitting president if he couldn't continue. And here we have Elizabeth Warren, uh, Liawatha, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Time to use the 25th Amendment to remove Trump from office, which is the idea they want to kind of put out there and trial balloon out to the public. He's a senator from Massachusetts, uh, and it's not going to work out. I mean, Mattis and Kelly and uh, Trump's former lawyer all say, we didn't say any of that stuff, that, you know, for Woodward's new book. I mean, you, Woodward, you better get your sources to come out. You better get your sources to come out because they're all top guys that you're quoting that said Trump was an idiot and things like that are saying, yeah, we didn't say that. Can you imagine that? You think that the, the top guy, uh, you know, the chief of staff, which is arguably the second or third, the third most powerful person in government because he controls the president's uh, uh, agenda, the secretary of his, uh, his calendar, the secretary of defense, Mattis, uh, and, uh, and Trump's top lawyer, who has attorney-client privilege, who is, doesn't, you know, 
the president's attorney, would be running their mouth off to say how kind of stupid their boss or their client is and how much kind of an idiot it is and how unstable it is. It didn't happen. These guys say it didn't happen. This is a panic. This is throwing anything out there. Now we're, we're back to the 25th Amendment now. We're back to the 25th Amendment. It, unbelievable. And you got people, you know, the journalists are now, we're going to fight back. You know, Chuck out. we're going to fight back. You're supposed to report the news. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's not journalism, folks. Not in any way, shape, or form, it is not journalism. Uh, I had one journalist on TV was talking about how, you know, I don't really like anonymous, anonymous sources. You don't really like anonymous sources? Well, if you're a journalist, you don't use them, period, the end. You don't. You better have somebody, it better be... You better have a profound national security issue, you know, like uh, or a profound issue that the Trump, that the public needs to see. The Pentagon Papers was such, you know, that it blew the whistle on what the Vietnam War was about. That the public needed to see that. But Donald Trump and they're trying to use character assassination and anonymous sources. If they really believe he's off the rails, they should come out and talk about it for real. They should come out and and, and own their words. That you could you could take a look at their motivation, you could take a look at who they are, what they did, what their record is, but oh no, 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 no. No. Uh-uh. Same thing with uh, Wood Woodward. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is all, I think, all a panic play to paint the president uh, unstable because they have to make up something. Because the indictments are going to roll, their little world is coming to an end, uh, they're not going to be able to do the same voter fraud that they tried the last time, which is why I think the polls were way off. They knew they were off, but they, they if Hillary did win by a big margin, the polls have to match by what she won, and well, guess what, she didn't win because they, they put the kibosh on some of the voter fraud. And more people turned out than they thought were going to turn out. And uh, yeah, I, I think they're desperate there's 25 people running, uh, 25 Democrat senators that are up for re-election. 25. There's 100 in the Senate. Uh, there's eight or nine, I think, uh, Republicans. There's no way that the Democrats are going to hold on to all 25 seats. And I say 25, there's a couple of independents, but they're Democrats. Bernie Sanders is a Democrat, a, a socialist Democrat, a national socialist, frankly, in my humble opinion. Uh, but, um, but these people, there's no way they're going to hold on to the Senate. I mean, excuse me, no way they're going to hold on to all, all 25 seats, and they're not going to take over the Senate. No way. This blue wave is going to be a blue... And the House is, I, you know, I, 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 I don't understand where the blue wave's coming from. And I think they know that. I think their internal polls are showing them that we're not doing so good. This is not a blue wave, and they're panicking. They're panicking because Trump is going to keep going forward. The Manafort investigation is going to come to a big fizzle out, and he did accept written questions. He won't be able to uh, do a, a, a perjury trap. It's going to come to an end. They're already preparing that it was illegitimate, and it was. They committed fraud, a frame job to get Mueller empowered and paneled. I mean, that's not a story for Bob Woodward, Mr. Watergate. It, it, unbelievable, folks. I, unbelievable. But I think the word is panic. Panic in the deep state. Panic with the New World Order Luciferians. Panic with the Democrats. And listen, the deep state, they're panicking because never have they had somebody like Donald Trump and uh, backed by the U.S. military and the military intelligence services. That's a, a, an, opponent they, an opponent they have never met with. I mean, usually the deep state just destroys you. Just relax. Yawn, you're destroyed. That's not happening here. That's not happening. And again, I'm going to say it again. They have to make it up. They're making it up because they don't have anything. And when the indictments start rolling, and and uh, when that does happen, they're going to say either uh, Trump's, you know, a Stalinist, or he's crazy. He's crazy. He's, he's off the rails. He's unhinged, which is a lie. He's not a Stalinist, and he's not unhinged. But that's all they got, folks, which to me is a Hail Mary pass, a panicked uh, situation. One of the things that isn't going to be good for Donald Trump is we have full employment, and that usually indicates that we're at the top, that there's no place to go but down. 
uh, Manorino sent me this. He was saying, hey, man, I just want to send you. This is Forbes magazine. Hey, you don't have to quote me, but he sent me this. But yeah, he says, but I agree with it. And it's Forbes magazine. Unfortunately, this unusual market strength is not evidence of a strong organic economy, but an extremely unhealthy artificial bubble economy that will end in a crisis that will be even worse than we expected in t experienced in 2008. Ben Reiner also set me up last week and said, you know, did you see uh, 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 PNC Paribas, you know, the big bank uh, got caught rigging LIBOR? Caught rigging LIBOR. I think they're getting fined $90 million. But no criminal, uh, no criminal uh, charges are going to be filed. No criminal charges. It, it, you know, it used to be that the central banks could get together and they could intervene and they could... Uh, use a little fraud, and they could, uh, you know, print some money, buy some bonds. They could step on the gas a little bit, keep the economy, you know, rolling. They've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, now they're just they're recycling the fraud cases. Now they're going to get another bank to suppress uh, LIBOR, which is London Interbank Offered Rate Interest Rates, because they can't have them go up just a little. They can't have them go up. You know, the debt is exploding, but interest rates are even. The debt is exploding, but gold and silver are around, you know, 14 and change and, and around $1,200. The debt is exploding, but, uh, oh, everything's fine. And they're having to employ um, pretty dreadful measures like uh, fraud to go along with the, uh, the, uh, the bond buying and the intervention and the money printing and everything else. Oh, and we and we have to have fraud to make this all work. And uh, you know, I I I, I'm, I had Rob Kirby on um, this past week, and he was um, telling me about the you know the early I think it was the early Sunday release, and telling me about he says the elephant in the room is the additional twenty one trillions. That's of course Mark Skidmore wrote me and said, oh, they told me it's a national security issue. I can no longer access any of that data that we compiled the twenty one missing trillion. That is on top of the twenty-one trillion that we already owe in the current federal deficit. Whoo! What could go wrong? We're living in a make-believe world, folks. We're living in a world where there's no uh, monetary laws, that all the uh, numbers are rigged: the unemployment, the inflation, the monetary supply, how much debt we owe, um, uh, interest rates. Uh, you know, futures are manipulated, gold's manipulated, silver's manipulated, commodities are manipulated, everything's manipulated, but it's okay. Go back to sleep, it's fine, we're good. We're living in a make-believe world, folks. We are living in a make-believe world. Now listen, I've been saying this for a while, and the reason why I'm saying this about be prepared, get ready and stay ready, is what I like to tell people. Get ready and stay ready. And I know it's daunting, and nothing's happened. But they have employed massive amounts of collusion by central banks. Nomi Prince just wrote her, just got her third bestseller uh, book. Uh, the book's called Collusion. I brought this up before. She proves that. That's how they did it. She proves it with, I don't know, 100 and something pages of footnotes and a bestselling book, Nomi Prince. So they, they did things that have never been done before. We have never been here before monetary uh, policy wise we have never been here before debt wise we have never been here be never been here as a as a world community uh, with the amount of fraud in the statistics never been here I mean one of the statistics is uh, accurate is we grew the global debt which we had a debt problem last time it crashed from about 160 to 70 trillion dollars to pretty close to 250 trillion so we tacked on another 70 or 80 trillion dollars in the last 10 years since the last blow up. Uh, I want to talk to you about this, the drought monitor here. I'm in a farm in Missouri. I didn't, I didn't tell you that's why I'm having this, you know, location. Uh, this is a, the Four Quarters area right here. Terrible drought right here. Terrible drought. It was worse than this. This is uh, September. We've had some rain. Uh, it was uh, really dried in, in, uh, in Missouri. I'm, I'm coming here from a farm in Missouri. And, uh, you know, the crops, now out east, uh, wow, out east has, has been, been fabulous all year. They've been getting plenty of crops, plenty of rain. So, uh, places up in Iowa, there's no drought in Iowa, no drought in Illinois uh, to speak of. Uh, Missouri uh, and uh, in parts of Missouri and, in, and out west. But, uh, but here, this area right here, just been hammered. But it was very, uh, what can I say, uneven 
in, in great swaths of the area. It looks better. The map looks better now, but, uh, you know, in July, the map was a lot more red, a lot more pink, a lot more drought. And so, uh, you know, some of the crops, and this is just from the, the farm here, some of the crops, this is, this is beans. And this is, this is the pods of the beans right here. This is not bad, not great, but not bad. You can see how tall the thing is. If I stood it down here, it comes up to, while I'm sitting in a chair, it comes up to my nose. So it, uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, this is going to end up, this got saved by the most recent rains, okay? Uh, this crop goes in later. And so this crop did, is do, going to do okay. It's going to make something. Not bad. But then you have uh, corn, and some of the corn, oh my gosh, some of the corn's 8, 9, 10 feet. They hit it right. They, got, they put it in. It rained. They got rain when they needed, and the, the drought, the dry spots that it didn't, that we uh, had, uh, they, the corn was already strong enough, but then other people got it in wrong. We, this is uh, another from our, this is, uh, this is actually, this is the, 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 this is it. So I got a field of this where it comes up, you know, three, four, five, five feet max. Could healthy corn is seven, eight feet tall, sometimes nine, ten feet tall. Uh, and they'll have, uh, you know, two, at least two, sometimes three ears to a stalk. You know, you got a, you got a corn crop when you have three. This is this right here. This is, here's, here's an ear, okay? Let me open this up live. I just know there's not much there. So here's an ear right here. There you go. That's, that's what this produced. A whole field of this. Oh, 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 here's an ear. Okay. Here, let's, here, let's just get that away. Here's an ear, too. Okay. That's it. This. They're usually like that. And they're usually like that. Okay. Here's a whole feel of this. One ear. One pretty paltry ear. A lot of crops ha had this happen this year. It was very uneven. I mean, five miles away, they'd get three inches of rain. Uh, here, they'd get, like, we get nothing. Uh, very, very uh, uneven, at least in this area, but I don't think it's going to be uh, a catastrophic event. Out, out east, the crops were just un bumper, massive, tall beans, chest high, corn, sky high, uh, out east in many states. Uh, lots of Lots of good. Other other people around here have been uh, combining and just going to feed it a silage. So uh, very uneven this year, but but not a disaster. There'll be some insurance paid for, for for some of the corn got three or four bushels to the acre when they get 150, or 180, or 200. I mean that just about a wipeout. I mean if they count the gas in the combine to get the three or four bushels, they they went backwards. They they had negative for wear and tear on the combine and and diesel fuel. But anyway. Uh, listen, overall, uh, what we're seeing is just panic. Panic in the mainstream media. They're talking about fighting back. They, you know, no journals would say that. No journals would say that. I would never talk about fighting somebody. I used to, start, in my office, I would say, people, we're going to get so and so. We're not going to get anybody. They're going to get themselves. We're going to judge that to be something that people need to see, and we're not getting anybody. Uh, I mean, we always try to put people in their best light. Now, ABC, for example. Uh, I would go do interviews, okay? And every single interview, because I had, I had a higher uh, level of, I was an investigative reporter, and I had a higher level, I would say something, you know, that could get the company sued. But if I was right, we wouldn't get sued and they'd defend me. That's back in the good old days when they actually had investigative reporters. But I would do an interview, and then every single interview, just so you know this, would be sent out to a transcription service, and they would transcribe the entire interview. Now, we might only use 15, 20, 30 seconds of a soundbite, you know, in a three or four or five-minute story. Uh, but every single person in the story would have their transcribed interview. And so the lawyers would look at your script when you were finished, and they'd go to, uh, to the interview, and then they'd look it up in the transcription to make sure you didn't misrepresent it, to make sure you got it correctly, and then they would okay your script. I mean, that's how detailed it got. It was unbelievably detailed. And I always had to put people in their best light. That was one of the things you used to say at uh, ABC. And it was the same thing at CNN. Well, you know, we couldn't get people. We had, to, we had to get the facts correct. And if that, they got them, then if that got them, then that's too bad. But uh, so there's this preacher. He was out west. And we went on this preacher. This is a true story, folks. 
And I, he agreed to interview with me. He had been ripping people off. He told, he had him, co-busted, had him. And he, oh, I want to talk. I want to tell my side. Okay, we'll fly out there. We'll get you. We'll spend the money. We'll come out there. Set up a crew, set him down, set that first, right out of the get-go, boom. He says, well, yeah, I ripped him off. I, I ripped people off. I, I kind of robbed him. He keeps talking. I keep interviewing him. Towards the end of the interview, the interview's not terribly long, 15, 20 minutes. And it didn't get contest, you know, it didn't get tough. It didn't get, you know, contest, uh, you know, uh, testy. It didn't get uh, mean. Uh, and at the end, towards the end of the interview, he says, well, I, I ripped him off. But I didn't mean to. Wasn't my intent. Guess which soundbite ABC made us use when we were doing a, 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 an investigation and exposure of this guy. The first one where he said, yeah, I ripped him off. That's the one we put in there originally. They made us use the second one. And they said, you have to put him in his best light. You can't just trash him. Okay? We still did the story and the guy had to pay back a ton of money. He went out of business, whatever. Do you think that the mainstream media is putting Donald Trump, the president of the United States, in the best light? Do you think that? The answer is no. They're committing acts of propaganda. That's what they're doing. That's all there's to it. It's not journalism, folks. Don't be freaked out by their panic. I, I laughed it off, actually. I, I thought, it was, I thought, oh my gosh, they're, they're panicking. One last thing, Dave Janda is going to be the early Sunday release. He's going to have lots to say about this, and lots to say about what's coming down. I think they have to set uh, Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court first, so they have a 5-4 decision. I think I said that earlier. Uh, I, before it happens, I think he said that uh, the, the big indictments would come out after the primaries. That's, uh, I think, next Tuesday is the last primary thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, Dave Janda of DaveJanda.com, Operation Freedom, he'll be the guest on the early, early Sunday release. He never disappoints. Uh, for that, I just want to tell you, listen, don't be fearful. Fear not. Prepare yourself mentally, physically, above all, spiritually. Fear not. And I mean this. Don't be fearful. Don't let the fear shake your faith. Uh, don't, let, don't let fear uh, make you cower. Uh, don't, uh, don't let fear paralyze you. That's what they want you to do. That's what they want you to think. So fear not. Uh, God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, firmly in control.